Okay, the transmission's back together. Uh, a few things here. Use your. I'm going to use Permatex gasket eliminator or gasket maker. Uh, probably kind of hard to see on that. You also need a little RTV. Uh, use the ultra copper or uh, the ultra blue that's made for uh, high temperature. Also, the style of grease that's inside these units. We're sealing everything back together. Uh, it's, it's all bolted back together. Got a couple bolts missing right here, but that's because the bracket for uh, shift mechanism is going to go on there. Also, still haven't put the shift arm uh, where that attaches inside. Uh, gonna wait till that gets back into the machine so it's a little easier to do. A little easier to stuff it up into the machine. Uh, you can see what you do is use a gasket eliminator for your two halves of aluminum housing. Use the ultra blue for your metal cover where it goes to the aluminum. Uh, gasket eliminator on your upper shift mechanism. Uh, this is what, like I said, this is what works your whole H pattern up and down. This would be equal to your H pattern going up and down and then your shifting of gears or into neutral. Uh, looking in the bell housing, uh, my throat bearing looks in good shape. Uh, I don't see any problem with that. What I do is put a little never seize around where that slides in and out just to make sure that that keeps going good. Uh, never seize seems to work a little bit better. It doesn't seem to collect, uh, just light coating that doesn't seem to collect uh, the dust and everything like the grease does. Uh, put my sensors back in, my speed sensor. Uh, your timing sensor off your flywheel. Now this is the part where I was saying that I had a problem with the shifter binding and that was in its up and down movement. I couldn't do that that easy before. It was really hard to do. But if this were mounted in the machine, and I'll show you once the machine's in there, uh, you have one bolt that goes through for your bracket that goes on there. You have three bolts around here. Uh, this pin holds this shaft and that cover from coming off. Technically, you could be able to take the whole thing out of there if it were binding and clean that lower shaft just by taking out this nut that uh, goes into that little H pattern within the, within the shift mechanism. Take that out and that whole thing, uh, taking these screws off, and this whole cover and everything should be able to come up out of there. Uh, and then if you want, you can take this out and tear the whole thing down and sand that shaft and clean that up. Uh, I have my new seals in place. I have my, uh, my uh, output seal for my front output. New seal for the rear output. Uh, transmission doesn't have any oil in it yet. Uh, the other thing is, is when you tear this apart, what you have is you have a series of bolts all the way around. You also have three bolts that are inside your bell housing that go to the top of the transmission. Now when you tear one of these down, you'll find uh, when you pull it apart, there's two things. There's uh, one shift collar inside that as you break this assembly apart, you have to loosen these two bolts uh, and try to think of where it would be. It's actually it's located right up in this area right here. Uh, as you break this apart, that's not going to want to come out. You have to use 13 millimeter and loosen those bolts and keep separating apart and loosen those bolts and you can take that whole this uh, bell housing and uh, transmission half off here. Also what you have are these two bolts in here and those are your indents for your shifter. Uh, there's also two springs and two ball bearings. I uh, crashed in a fuzzy Z71. When they took theirs apart, they asked me what those ball bearings were for. That's where they came from is they'll fall through the transmission as possible you can lose them and now that I've uh, torn this one apart, now I remember what they were. And so what you want to do is the, the two on the top, take those out, take the springs out, uh, use a small magnet and pull those uh, steel ball bearings out of there. And when you clean them all up and put them back in. 
So that's pretty much it. It's all set to go back into the machine. I'll set up the GoPro and see if we can get a good view. And we'll show you how to stuff this thing back into the machine. One thing you have to do too is uh, as you get ready to pull your transmission is you can see makeshift kind of cobble job up here but you have to either block your engine or what I do is take a tie strap to the front eyelet where they lift it in when they assemble the whole thing and just bring it around and go down to one of the red hooks and just tighten it up and lift the engine back up off and take that pressure off of it. Okay, once you get it up here, you got two bolts that hold it in, two big main bolts that hold it into place. On the passenger side is a big cap screw, comes in from the transmission side. We'll get a few threads started in that. Went on the opposite side. Comes in from the end of the block side. Chip cable out of my face and see what I'm doing here. Let's get that up in there. And to get some threads started on that. You can see it's just a matter of jockeying it around, getting everything in place. Sockets for that. Now I'll show you, I forgot to mention, what you got to do is, because of the way this engine's mounted, and you have your front mount that's underneath your transmission is, you have to block your engine up, or what I do is, uh, is strap it in the back and pull the front of the engine up so the whole thing doesn't want to fall down. And let me make sure we don't have any wires that got caught behind the barrel housing block. Uh, the other thing I do is I take off the whole, the whole shift mechanism when you're taking the transmission out to get that out of your way. Uh, you have your, your speed sensor that is hooked up on there. You have that cable to take off. Uh, there's also a ground wire that everybody talks about that goes to the engine block as well. Uh, make sure we get that back on when we assemble it back together. But you can see it's not, I mean, obviously it's not something you want to do every day. Okay, we got her pulled in. Just about snug there. I want to leave it a little bit loose so I can get other bolts to line up as we tighten everything down. We'll finish pulling this side in the rest of the way. And as you can see, I forgot to get my axle in it or my drive shaft, and that's not going to fit now. So now I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to loosen my differential and do it the hard way. But it's probably a little easier if you had two people doing this, but I don't have anybody else that wants to come around and do this kind of work with me. And uh, for some reason, I just can't get the wife out here to wrench on the Reaper that much. So those two bolts are in there just about, not quite snug down, but a little bit so there's 
there will be just a hair of play in this whole in the whole system here so I will go around and get everything bolted out and take care of the big uh, scrape I have that's leaving a trail of blood all over my chest uh, so that's it now we're just gonna assemble all the little bits and pieces uh, I'm not gonna bore you with that on the video I just wanted to show you or let you see me struggle to get this son of a bitch in there uh, and it's not that terribly bad it probably would have been better if I would have had it jacked up a little bit higher uh, another thing to keep in mind is when you're pulling the transmission out it is a lot easier to do if you take off this your shift uh, brackets take off your obviously you have to take off your shift linkage uh, you can take this whole assembly apart uh, it's easier if you take this shift knob off you can leave that on place it's not that big of a deal but you do have a brace that goes across in front of the engine uh, to each side of the frame that has to come out also uh, and then you do have a couple sensors you have your reverse sensor uh, your speed sensor uh, or your timing sensor on your flywheel and your uh, speedometer sensor over there uh, that's pretty much all there is up here you have to do you, your radiator hoses will be fine just get your other uh, your other uh, wires and stuff out of the way you do have two big bolts here and then the bolts on each side so there's four bolts uh, that hold this whole transmission into place and other than that you have your front mount and that's pretty much it now you can see this is after it's back in and I was having quite a bit of trouble with this uh, with the shifter binding and it works much smoother now I it took a lot of effort to get this this part of it to lift up like that uh, it's working a lot better now I'm still gonna be looking at right now I just want to see how everything runs but I'm still gonna be looking at doing this with uh, hard rods instead of using the cable and having that slap of the cable and uh, I can see I need to tighten this mechanism up a little bit more take a little slop out of that but that's pretty much all there is to uh, pulling that